So I recently made a video on my old CPU cooler, which was the Acetec 120mm AIO all-in-one liquid cooler. In this video, I'm going to be replacing that with the Deepcool Captain 240EX liquid AIO. This one's a 240mm radiator. As you can see, it's already installed, but I'm going to go through the whole process in this video. I'm also going to give you guys my initial thoughts and just some benchmark tests. Now before I begin, the processor I'm using is the Intel Core i7-7700K and the case is the NZXT S340 Elite. With that said, let's go very quickly through the unboxing process. So in the box you will receive the liquid cooler, obviously, a manual, two 120mm fans that attach to your radiator, both the long screws and the short ones so you can use the ones you want depending on how you mount the radiator and the fans. You also get a fan extension which has slots for four four pin fans and most importantly you get all the mounting brackets and screws necessary for Intel LGA 2011 1366 1151 which is what I'll be using and for AMD AM4 AM3 plus AM3 AM2 plus AM2 FM2 plus FM2 and FM1 pretty much no matter what you use Deepcool has you covered the cold plate also comes pre-installed with thermal paste I almost forgot to mention it also comes with a, with a badge or a sticker whatever you want to call it to put in the front of your PC to let everyone know that your PC is cooled by GamerStorm slash deep cool. I bought this cooler on Amazon for a total of $85 with tax and shipping included. You can find it for less in other places. But I was surprised at the quality of the included items. The tubes and cables for the pump, the fans, and the extension are all sleeved and feel very premium. The radiator has high density aluminum fins and once again it comes with a thermal paste pre-applied. Very high quality stuff from Deepcool. The menu comes with images for all kinds of CPU sockets used which makes the installation process very easy. I had a lot of trouble installing my old 120mm AIO but this one was a breeze. One thing that may be a problem for some is that the pipes are a little short compared to the other ones out there. Alright, so this is going to be my first boot with the Captain 240EX, I just installed it. One thing I'm worried about is that right up there, the pipes, they almost just barely miss the fan in the front, uh, or on the top I should say. Um, I, this was an issue and I, I completely didn't know that this was going to happen. The pipes don't bend that easy and I'm not sure if that's going to you know, make this burst or something, hopefully not. Uh, but I did zip tie one to the other to make it closer to it to avoid hitting that fan up there. So hopefully that's not an issue. I'm gonna power it on, nothing's plugged in, not my keyboard mouse, nothing, not even the front panel is on, none of the panels are on. And there's my old uh, liquid cooler. So here we go, I am expecting it to make some noise at first, if it works, hopefully. Three, two, one. Yeah, there's a little bit of noise. Just keep in mind that there's a fan right next to, I mean, a, a refrigerator, a mini fridge right next to the PC. There's a little bit of noise, but nothing bad. And it should go away within a couple minutes, maybe even seconds. This is just it starting up. As you can see, I also installed an ML120 in the back with a 140 on top and no interference with the tube right there, the pipes. The 120s that came with the cooler are right here in the front with the AIO. In this case there's no room for push-pull so they, they can only be on one side. There is room on the bottom so I could add another fan in here but that probably won't work because it won't look well. But yeah everything seems to be working just fine. Knock on wood. So like I said here's my old AIO liquid cooler from Acetec 120mm. I didn't know much about cooling when I bought this PC so I just chose this one. Uh, it was pretty good, it got the job done. The highest temperature I saw was about 88 degrees with one fan on it while rendering a video in 4K. I made a whole video about it, check it out down below. 
Now that it's installed, I have to say that I would rather have this AIO than one with RGB. It looks that good. And it still has a white light on the pump. The front fans are also not loud at all. It's pretty much silent when using it normally. And when you start gaming or doing more intense tasks, they speed up and you can hear them, but it's normal. You can't hear them at all if you're wearing headphones. All that is nice, but how does it perform? I only tested a few things, so I'll have more in the full review. Anyway, at idle, with nothing running in the background, and with the processor stock at 4.2GHz, it ran at a temperature of 31 degrees Celsius. When the processor was at 4.5GHz, also with nothing running in the background, it ran at 35 degrees Celsius. While playing Far Cry 4 in 1440p resolution with very high settings, it played with temperatures of 58 degrees Celsius. That's very good. But I guess gaming heats up the graphics card more than it heats up the processor. I also ran a test on Cinebench, and the temperature stood at 73 degrees Celsius. I'll be doing more tests in the near future. So far, I'm very happy with my purchase. Not only was it not expensive at $76, which came out to $85 total, but this is also a very good looking cooler, one of the best in my opinion that doesn't have RGB. There is an RGB variant which costs about $30 more, but that's pretty much all you're getting, just RGB. It's pretty much the same cooler. I am planning on overclocking the CPU and see how that performs with this cooler and doing more stuff like that. That's it for this video, if you own this cooler, tell me in the comment section below what you think of it and what if you would recommend it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video.